first thing you want to do with regards to color management inside of Photoshop is go ahead and configure your color settings, which is located underneath Edit. And we just scroll to the bottom here and you'll find color settings. Now, if you've never played around with Photoshop's color settings before, they may look quite daunting at first, but really there are only a few things you need to know in order to get started. So the first thing I want you to do is go to the right hand side of your actual window and click on the more options button just to reveal all of the available options with regards to color settings. Now if we work our way down from the top, the first option you'll see is the settings drop down menu, which has several presets from which you can choose, but essentially we're going to set up your own custom configurations. So we don't need to touch any of these at this moment. Underneath we have working spaces and this is where you specify a default color profile for each color mode. So we have RGB, CMYK, grayscale and spot. Now a working space as such is usually considered as a color profile that you use when editing and adjusting your images. It's not device specific but it has a large enough color gamut that it can actually contain all the colors that are present in your digital image. Now the most common working spaces that you've probably already heard of are sRGB, Adobe RGB, and Profoto RGB. Now I'm going to leave this set to Adobe RGB. Now once you've chosen your preferred working spaces, we can then proceed to configure Photoshop's color management policies, which determine how Photoshop handles color profiles when opening and working with images. So you'll have here, once again, you'll have the color mode. So you have RGB, CMYK, and grayscale. And essentially for these three drop downs, you'll actually select whether you want to turn them off, whether you want to preserve embedded profiles that are uh, existing and embedded in a digital file, or whether you want to convert to your working RGB space. So essentially whatever you put up here as an RGB space will be uh, what your image is converted to if you choose convert to working RGB space if your image is actually in a different uh, color profile to begin with. Now underneath these particular color modes we have a couple of check boxes and they're primarily for profile mismatches so when you actually open up your documents it'll ask you whether you want to actually use the embedded profile or convert to your existing default working space. Uh, and you also have missing profiles. So if you open an image and it doesn't have an embedded color profile, it'll actually ask you what you want to do, whether you want to leave it without a profile or actually convert once again to your default working space. Now underneath policies, we have conversion options, which as the name suggests, is how Photoshop actually manages the conversion process between color profiles. Now you want to leave the actual engine set to Adobe ACE, but you'll most likely need to actually adjust the rendering intent. And that is this particular drop down window here. So you'll have four options from which you can actually choose from. You'll have perceptual, saturation, relative color metric, and absolute color metric. Now I recommend that you actually use either perceptual or relative color metric for photographs and if you'd like to learn more about how rendering intents work, then after this tutorial, go ahead and actually watch the next video on Assign and Convert to Profile, where I give an in-depth explanation of how rendering intents work and why you should use, or why you should only use, perceptual and relative color metric when it comes to photography. Now, I also recommend that you actually utilize the use black point compensation, which controls whether uh, to adjust for differences in the black points when actually converting colors between different color spaces. So I'll usually leave this set uh, and checked. Now underneath the black point compensation, we have use dither. Now I also recommend that you leave this one checked as it actually will help with reducing uh, banding artifacts when converting 8-bit images between different color spaces. Now as for compensate for scene referred profiles, don't worry about this at all because primarily this option is only available in Photoshop Extended and is used for videos. 
Now one of my favorite options inside of color settings that will actually assist you with calibrating your monitor is desaturate monitor colors, which is under the advanced controls. So if your photographic or inkjet prints are actually coming out less saturated than that which you are viewing on your monitor, what you can do is actually turn on desaturate monitor and add a specific percentage value that will desaturate your monitor. And you'll be able to sort of balance the two in order to match them more closely, which will help overall with your color management. So you essentially want to start with about 20%, which is the default value here. But if I just turn that on and off, you'll notice it's desaturated the colors of this particular Granger rainbow image that I've got open at the moment. Now at this stage, I recommend that you also leave blend RGB colors using gamma turned off, as that's something we can discuss in the future when we get a bit more advanced. Now, if you get stuck and would like more information on any of the available options within color settings, all you need to do is essentially hover over a particular item that you have questions about. And you'll notice down the bottom here that you have this description uh, panel. And essentially, that's going to give you a technical description of whichever, uh, whatever items you essentially hover over. So it'll give you a little bit more information regarding those if you do have any questions. Finally, as with most options in Photoshop, once you're happy with your settings, you can actually choose to save them by going up to the save button up the top here. And once you actually save them as a new preset, they'll actually appear in the settings drop down menu just here as whatever you choose to save them and name them by. Now in the next lesson, I'll answer the question, what is the difference between assigning and converting to a profile?